So uh, to give you an introduction about service now, so most of you people say that. Um, so the the first question, what everybody have in mind, huh? what is a service now? So this is a basic question everybody have in their mind when when they're trying to uh, learn a new tool. So not only service now, you you take any tool, you take Salesforce, you take um, HPSM, you take um, Fujira or whatever, right? So what is the first thing you wanted to know? What is a tool about? What is that? You you, you need to understand a uh, two liner introduction about the tool, right? So if somebody asks me what is ServiceNow, I will say ServiceNow is a information uh, technology service management tool. It's a ITSM. What is ITSM tool again? So somebody from uh, uh, having no idea what is a ITSM and all because you know this is more of for dealing with service management and all this stuff because I don't know what is ITSM. So, so people come to me uh, often they ask me what is ITSM. So I can give an abbreviation like you know it's an information technology or infrastructure service management or whatever. Service management. What is what is the actual meaning of service management, right? So basically, <clears throat> to manage your services in any organization. To manage your services, you need a tool. This is a one-line answer. If you deep dig into it, if you deep dig into, it, let's say, I have a company called. Um, let's say there's a company called Apple, right? So this company is more into uh, manufacturing the product, uh, manufacturing the electronics. Let's say mobile phone, iPods, uh, Mac, or whatever. So they're, they're, they're spending 90% of their efforts, 90, 90, 90% of their efforts on manufacturing uh, the best product in the world. Right? The best product in the world. So, coming to the over point here. Do you really think it is possible to make an error free product? Obviously, I would say no. Right? There is no such product that has been introduced to the world yet, which is error free. Right? So, if you started using any, any of the product, you take, you name any product, over a period of time, it start bugging you. Right? It started having some problems, huh? You, at least you will have, you need to maintain it. You need to maintain it. After, let's say you have a Unix server. You've been maintaining the Unix server for a period of two years. After two years, like, you know, within these two years, you need to maintain the patches and everything, right? So the upgraded servers and all, so that it will it will be up and running, right? So creating, manufacturing an error-free product is something impossible, okay? So any product-based company, they have two options in their mind. One thing, manufacturing an error-free product or Establish services or software. Right? <clears throat> so, first case, I would say it is impossible. In the case of first, it is impossible to make a product which is error free. End of the day, you have to provide the support to any of these. Let's say if, if Apple says, okay, I'm releasing the iPhone X today and it's an error free product, there will not be any support. So until and unless it reach out to the market and people started using it, even Apple don't know what kind of errors the product, the product will give you. Right? If somebody calls, if somebody had some problem with my iPhone X, I'm using iPhone X, let's suppose, and I have some problem with this. So they, let's suppose there is no support. Who should I go? Right? So, so what often people do is, they establish the servers, services. They establish the services. What exactly is this piece of work is providing the services, providing the services to the customer. The customer can be your end user, or your internal support, internal customers, internal user, or across the globe. For example, let's in the case of Apple, Apple have a customer across the world. Apple have a customer across the world. There are a couple of co uh, uh, countries they are not using iPhone. That's a different story altogether, right? So across the world, people uh, people uh, started using Apple, right? So any 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 time they they got some issues, uh, they received some issues, they started calling 
immediately they start uh, calling one eight double zero one eight six zero two double six two double six. Immediately the, the phone will ring and somebody from the customer support executive, the front office execution or whatever, he will pick up the call. Hey sir, how can I help? And you will say, hey, uh, I have I, I bought a new phone and this give me a bad time, and I cannot see my screen. Just the one year, one month old or two month two month old. So, so this piece of work huh, will be handled by the support. So, for example, let's suppose Apple took an ownership. Apple took an ownership of producting, of manufacturing a uh, the best product and providing the best services let's suppose apple uh, apple thought let's let's uh, let me handle both the chips in my hand so i will i'll provide the best product in the market and i'll also provide the best services so over a period of time any of the ship will sink because handling uh two big pieces in hand that's a big risk Okay, so what people will do is often, so they will go into the market. Okay, they'll go into the market. Says, "Hey, I have a product. I I want I want a uh, please uh, whoever the service based companies hmm, just come up with your bids. Huh? So I will hand over my uh, support piece of work to you, so that any Apple customer have issues that you know you will be answered." So let's suppose Apple Apple came into the market and there are a couple of companies like Infosys, uh, uh, Dell, or Wipro, whatever. Uh, there are a couple of companies. They, they came into the picture and they started uh, uh, quoting their budget and all the stuff. Finally, Dell Dell uh, the Dell was able to achieve the target. Okay. So Apple and Dell had a meet. Apple and Dell had a agreement that Dell is said I will provide the 365 days so uh, uh, support. Uh, around the clock, anytime, any anytime your Apple user have issues, they can approach me. You know? um, I have like you know thousand, two thousand resources. Who will the, I? Who can I uh, accommodate to work dedicatedly for the Apple project? You know? I have best uh, uh, my people manager here, and the best technicians in the world. So they said finally they were able to convince. They showed resources, people, technology, everything. Finally, right? So how did they achieve? There are there are <clears throat> couple of strategies we have. ITN, information technology, infrastructure library. So this will give the the proper idea what exactly how exactly this transition happens or not. So anything, any company which which will provide, which will take the take up the services, what the first thing what they, they will they will do is they will design a strategy within internet. Huh? This strategy This strategy is something about how best you are providing, how, how are we going to achieve this target. So, this is a strategy. Once you are done with the strategy, then you will put it everything in the paper and you will design. Right? And once you have designed everything, so what you will do, you will transition. Well, what is your transition key? You are, you are taking handover of the Apple products one by one. You are do, you're doing it phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. How many phases you wanted to do it, and end of the day you will be handling the Apple products, right? And once you're done with the transition, and this is where operations come into the picture and CSS. Okay, later part we'll discuss about this. Operations. So if I have hundred rupees in my pocket, for example, if I have hundred bucks in my pocket for this project. Okay, I spend eighty dollars, sorry, twenty dollars for the strategy and design and transition, but I spend eighty percent, eighty bucks for the operations because strategy, design, transition, these three are are the one time activity. Once are done, and once once a client is impressed, and you will be given with the Things and all, everything is done. It's a wonderful activity. Once you're done, you're done. You're done. So what will happen once you onboarded? Once the transition is completed, that's when the operations come in. 
What is this operation? Operating the processes. Operating the procedures. How well you are operating your client. Right? So this is where your resources come into the picture. People. Infrastructure. Huh? And a lot of things come into the picture. Right? So it's a day-to-day -day activity. It's a it's a day-to-day -day activity which, which runs on a continuous basis. You need to make sure everything is working smoothly. You need to anticipate the things. That's where the CSA comes. Continuous services improvements. You need to anticipate the things. For example, let's suppose, uh, let's suppose, there's a, today you have got a phone, uh, from, uh, one of the Apple customers saying, hey, uh, I bought, uh, uh, I'm, I'm using iPhone 8 and somehow this is not working. The specific piece of part is not working. You receive three calls in a one hour. So what you will do, there's something that going wrong. So what you will do, you will immediately Identify the, you raise the issue to the respective person and you make sure, and <clears throat> you'll make sure issue is fixed before it gets, uh, it goes bigger, right? So that is part of the continuous service improvement, which is completely relevant at this moment. So we were always talking about the operations. So how are you operating the things? So okay, for example, you no, know, as part of my agreement, I said, uh, there are P1, priority one, I will categorize your callers, for, uh, I will categorize your requests, into three or four parts, which is priority one, priority two, priority three, priority four. Let's say. If there's a VIP user, is a Tim Cook, huh? Tim Cook, I don't know who is the CEO of Apple, but let me just speak. There's a, there's a, a CIO of the company who is not able to log in. Let's say. Priority one issue, because there are a lot of business impact on it. How, how quickly you're going to resolve this issue? Right? And there's a priority two issue. There's a database issue which is running very bad and it, it's, the proper action is not taken and there's a database, uh, the, the issue goes bigger and that's when, uh, you need to be more careful and what, that's where I will, I will consider your request as priority two. You need to fix it. That's called priority two. So we said priority two, priority three, priority four. We categorize the request here. Hmm? We categorize the request here. Right? Let's suppose <coughs> we categorize the request. Where are we categorizing this request? Do we have a tool? How are we measuring the works? How are we, how, how, how uh, what is the possibility to measure the works? If we have, if you, let's suppose you don't have any tool in your hand. So are you doing it in Excel sheet or something? If you're doing it in Excel sheet or Miss Word or something, some, some manual stuff, and you're writing somewhere, that's not accurate. Right? Where is the evidence? I always look into the evidence. The client is always looking to the part of evidence. So that's where, a ticketing tool come into the picture. A ticketing tool come into the picture or I will call it as a service management tool. That's where I will manage my services accurately and I will measure the work, how exactly I am doing and what improvement that I need to do and how well I can present it to my client. To measure my services, I need a tool called ITS. Right? This is where ITS and tool comes into the picture. So what is ITS and tool? How well you are managing the services? You are managing the services over there. You are measuring your services. You are measuring your performance. Right? So this is where the ITS and tool comes into the picture. There are a couple of tools currently in the market. Huh? HPSM, HP Service Management Tool. So on DMC Remedy, we used to have this tool. This tool like ruled the market almost 10 years. Close to 10 years, DMC Remedy. And we have service now. We have service now, and people call it as some chairwell tool, huh? uh, and some ho uh, heat software tool. There are good number of ITSM tools that are available. No matter how many tools in the market, end of the day, our motto is to manage our services. So here, out of X, Y, Z, out of n number of tools, we need to pick the right tool. Now we picked up the tool called service now. Why people are going with the service now? Service now is a ticketing tool which is hosted in a cloud environment. I, if somebody says it's a cloud tool, it's a cloud cloud host, cloud based tool, it's not a great issue because these days each and every tool, nobody is using on premises. Every everybody is going to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and not a great deal actually. But what makes service now become a leader? of the world. 
why people are opting for the service mode. What's a great thing that are there in the service mode? Why do I need to go with the service mode? Service now, more than an ITSM tool, more than an ITSM tool, service now is a tool which includes of multiple modules. Which includes of multiple modules. Right? I, I'm not, I will not see service now as a, just as a ticketing tool or to just to measure my services. Yes, that's a key point. It started as a service now, uh, service management tool. But what makes service now as a leader, if somebody asks me, service now started as a ticketing tool, but it started incorporating good number of modules. It started understanding the market and incorporating the modules. Let's suppose. This guy was talking modules and all. So what is this module? I really don't understand. I will say, let's suppose I have a security uh, team which I recently established. What exactly my security team will do? do they do penetration tests huh? or uh, uh, software uh, software uh, management and all huh? or asset management, uh, all the stuff. Uh, not asset management, the software asset management, mail phishing uh, and all the stuff. So basically, to do this, can I do it manually? It's not possible. So definitely I need a tool. Right? Let's suppose I have an example here. So my client will say, hey, uh, you, we established a software as a so security operation center here. So what you will do is like, you know, I want you to check. You know, I want you to, ch I want you to perform a, ch a check on a, on a weekly or monthly basis to see how many softwares that exist in the, um, within the office and how many licenses are each uh, given to each individual and how many are using the how many are being used effectively how many are not being used effectively right so if i wanted to do this i definitely need a tool so i'll go with some entity sim tool and all this stuff so it costs me around one crore two crore rupees but if i go with the service now service now will provide a module called sam software asset management so from this I can, what exactly this, this module will do is, once you have service now in your case, huh, you will, you will streamline all your assets with the CMDB, configuration management database. I'll deep dig into that when we are started training. Huh? So the configuration management database. So this particular thing, uh, will streamline all the assets and we can, we can incorporate this module and we can identify what all the software that exists in, in the company and how the activity effectively is being used. If this is anybody, let's suppose I have a Microsoft Access, this particular application is not being used by XYZ people, will send a reminder, hey, you are not using this software. Do you really require this? If not, let me know. I can assign this license to somebody and somebody can make use of this. That's the beauty. Just give me a moment. Huh? Just give me a moment. Right? So this is one module. If somebody really wanted to go with a separate tool, that costs you a lot. Why should I go with the tool, uh, which is where I have a module which is already there inside this one? That's one thing. And there's a chart board, which is available. Uh, and uh, there's a, uh, as I said, the configuration management database, which is already existed, CMDB. <clears throat> and you can build mo any mobile application. Mobile application. And there's a module called HR. There's a module called finance. Huh? There's a module called travel and expenses. Travel and expenses. Huh? So X, Y, Z, so on. You can, you can, all you have to do is you need to understand which module you are doing. Right? So this particular, uh, behavior of the service now, for this, and people are, people are choosing service. People are going with the service now. So what happened is, so as number of companies, number of organizations acquiring service now, opting for the service now, the employment of the on the service now part is keep keep on growing. Now, so if you uh, if I don't, I don't know how many of you from India, and how many of you from uh, USA. So there are in the US there are, there are ten jobs, but only uh, five people of service now. So that's become the hot tool. Uh, that's made our uh, service now is become hot these days. Huh? So this is the service now thing. One is about the modules, right? Another one is self-explanatory behavior, right? So for example, let's say 
you must have, uh, uh, most of you at least uh, used Facebook and Instagram at once. So, uh, when you, when you started using the Facebook or Instagram, so when you, when you logged in into, okay, so nobody would have teach you what exactly you need to do in the Facebook. So, somebody told me like there's a Facebook or there's a, there's a, uh, social media, uh, application or something that I need to log in. So what you do is when you type Facebook in the URL, oh, there's a page, oh, it'll, it'll tell you like, you know, you need to enter your first name here, last name here, mobile number, gender, email address. You submit. As you know, submit, as soon as you submit, what will happen? It will take you into the screen and when you look into the Facebook application, it will tell you this is where I need to upload my picture and this is my wall and this is my feed and news feed and this is where I need to come in and this is how I need to react to any. Right? So, hey, uh, I'm sorry, just, just give me a moment, huh? Just give me a moment. I'll not take much time. So it's a self estimated behavior. So when you actually look into the Facebook, that nobody will teach you what exactly you need to do in that. Looking at the product, you'll understand what you need to do. So the same, the same behavior that what actually they in the service now. When you look into the product, you'll understand this is where I need to click on incident. This is where I need to change the problem. Okay. This is where I need to create a problem. These things will make service now become a leader. Coming to the other point, availability. So, service now availability, people say, uh, 97 to 98% of availability. So, this is, which is, uh, equal to the Microsoft availability. What, how it is happening is, so when somebody is opt for the service now, what they'll do is, they'll, they'll establish two physical servers, two physical servers, which is in geographically divided locations. For example, let's say I have, a, I have one server that I'm being established in, that I'm being established in Singapore, another one I'll, I'll establish in North America. So what will happen? So tomorrow, which is unpredicted, happen, which is unexpected happen in, in any of the location, immediately the other server will rise and start working on it. Including when you, when even you don't know when exactly there is a planned outage happening. Everything is going in the back. So that's where the availability comes into the picture, right? So which is equal to 90, 97, 97 to 98 percent. I'm not exactly sure what the percentage between that, but it falls on the 90 to 99 percent. So that's about why we need to choose service mode. Coming to history of the service mode. I think most of you must have Googled and had some, uh, uh, on, uh, search on this service now history. It started in 2004 by Mr. Fred. He worked as a CIO for uh, multinational companies and he started this company at his age of 60. So, and once he started, like, you know, it, the, the version of the service now we started establishing with the, with the names of other city names. Something like, a, uh, you, <coughs> if you have not have any idea, any idea about um, Android, Android used to release their versions with uh, food names. Uh, lollipop, jelly, etc. Something like that. Okay. The same uh, applied here, so which is a different uh, way. So, in an alphabetical order, so service now release their versions with a city name. For example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Is aspirin is the first version. Berlin. Calgary, Dublin, Reka, Geneva, huh? Helsinki. I'll give you a pause here actually. Okay, I'll give a pause here. So, uh, so when, when we, when we talking about QZ, then we need to talk about uh, the coding, right? So when, when there was a, when, when people started working when, when the QZ release, the, the service now is, is one of the tools which is more complicated. A lot of Angular JS, a lot of JavaScript. It used to be very much complicated and a lot of code used to be involved in it. So after Fuji release, so when, when Geneva started, like people started, uh, what ServiceNow is, ServiceNow started incorporating, uh, minimizing the, the code and, and started automating the things into the, uh, UI level. So they established some drag and drop options, huh? And, uh, if you wanted to do some, something like, you know, they established some buttons. So instead of writing a code, you can do just, huh? 
policies, you can set up some policies and all, all you can do in a, in a go. So now the, 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 when the recent release in the London, things have become more easy that 70% of the coding is reduced. I'm not saying it's service with a code free technology, but the, it, 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 it come to one level where people used to say JavaScript, Angular, JS, now people say service law script. So it had, it has defined, you know, own, uh, predefined the function, predefined objects, predefined classes, right? So if somebody asked me that, I, how, how are you going to teach service now coding, uh, uh, coding in, in service now, I would say, you don't have to, you don't have to get any knowledge about the JavaScript and language. Just forget about it. If you are out of interest, if you wanted to learn, learn it. That is, that's definitely going to help you. Something like adding fuel to the fire. But I will say service now scripting. I'm going to teach you service now. That's, that's where the, the service now is standard here, right? So now, uh, coming to the topic, Istanbul is a next version. Jakarta. London. I think uh, Madrid or Melbourne. I don't know which version is going to be uh, introduced. It's Madrid or Melbourne. Oh, this is going to be the next. So this is the history of service now. Thank <laughs> you.